Another day, another daily Age of Empires free videos just for you boys. I love reading your comments saying, uh, oh, I, I, I like to have watch your daily video with breakfast, with dinner, after exams, after, you know, do, uh, in your lunch breaks, um, during sex. Anyways, moving on. And today is going to be Karim versus multiple sclerosis. Most of you should know by now that this is AKA Mr. Osteo. So one of the most toxic players in the game, literally, and his game style is considered very toxic, but also he himself is very toxic. <laughs> he loves a good flame. Many a time have I played this guy and he's, uh, he's dropped a lot of F-bombs on me if I've beaten him. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just funny all around. You know, every game has characters like these. Every game has characters like this. Thankfully, Age of Empires 3 only has a handful of them. But nonetheless, it's still pretty funny. So he is playing Mexico, which is not one of his normal civilizations. We have seen him play Mexico. I think he did... Um, last time we saw it... I think he went up against, I think it was that Baja video where he, it was double Mexico and, and his opponent went Baja. And and I think Osteo likes to go for an Hacienda boom. So maybe we'll see an Hacienda boom here. Uh, I would be surprised, but nonetheless, it's uh, it's a cool build to watch. Um, hence why I wanted to catch this game. Going up against Big Karim as well. You know Karim, he's starting to find his feet. He took a, like an extended break. Six months, nobody saw him. The last month. During October, we've seen nothing but Karim. So it's really good to see. He's getting he's getting his mojo back, baby. You know, he's getting his mojo back. Yeah, baby. And uh, he's starting to get back to his old ways, all of his old builds, which is really good to see. Let's have a look at this deck. We're seeing Silk Road, baby. But you know my boy Karim ain't building TPs. He's not shipping this card for the extra XP or extra resources you get from the TPs. He's doing it. Because he wants all of these juicy, juicy crates, baby. So if anyone doesn't know, this gives 25% extra XP and resources to TPs. It also gives 25% more resources to crates. So when you ship things like 700 wood, you get 25% extra wood. When you ship like 1k coin and 1k wood, they're worth 1,250 resources. It's the same with your age up resources. So we see here he's aging up with the philosopher's, uh, philosopher's print. That's 500 food. It's going to be turned into 625. So good stuff here by Karim. I believe he left some re his uh, starting resources on the floor. Hence why he's got 100 wood there. He's aging up. Looking pretty good. Really fast age up time here. Uh, and this age up is so incredibly fast. It's debatable whether the Silk Road play is better than the Gold Trickle capitalism. I'm, I'm, I think it's, it depends if you get rushed or not. I think if you don't get if you don't get any pressure, then I think Silk Road is potentially his strongest build. He does have the Moss Construction and Palace Intrigue as well, so you could see those juicy, juicy shipments, techs rather, from the Mosque. Karim almost aging up. Osteo, here we are. Uh, everyone currently on wood and oh look at that deck what on earth is that deck? let's have a lovely look at this so he shipped uh, the hacienda two sellers oh he's gone for land grab so he is gonna go for an hacienda boom interesting so this uh decreases the cost of haciendas he does have uh rancheros which is a great card team uh mariachi haven't seen that. Never see that. For 30 seconds, all military buildings and units go fast. But yeah, that, that is hilarious. It boosts the speed of your units for 30 seconds. Um, interesting. Interesting stuff. Can't say I think it's a, an amazing deck, but it's uh, it's different, that's for sure. Second Hacienda is down. I'm sure it's going to be Tax Color is the age up. Yeah, Tax Color. And uh, that's going to be for the shipment that gives two villagers. And an extra two villagers per Hacienda. So currently it's worth six. Here it comes. The military wagon is going to be a cantina. Interesting. And Rancheros is on the way as well. Going for that TP start. Has lost his explorer. Oh, dearie me. And Karim picking up 70 coins. Looks like Karim killed the explorer and picked up the goods. Looks like 700 gold is... Is that 700 gold getting gobbled up there? 
Karim clicking agent before five minutes. <laughs> That's so insane. You're able to click into age three before five minutes. Even like the most, but like even the fastest rushes. And when I talk about fastest rushes, I mean like the the, the standard rushes. You know, the the the, re the ones that pack the punch that can actually do something against you. They don't really come in till five and a half minutes generally. Five to five and a half minutes, and that's the fastest rushes. So Otto's can click age up without a villager shipment in age one or a coin trickle shipment in age one. They can do it that fast. That is insane. Going for millet system here as well. He shipped the 700 wood. So he's he feels obviously he's put a market down with hunting dogs as well. So that's the extra bonus that the Silk Road gives you. It gives him over 800 food, uh, 800 resources. I believe it does it give not about 900 resources I'm trying to do the math in my head now uh it's close it's close but anyway i'm not going to do the math in i ain't going to do the math in Wow, and still traps. And look at this. This is perfect. He's done. This ain't his first rodeo because look, he has got this down to a T. He knows exactly how much wood he can gather and how much wood he needs. Because look at this. He's now, the moment he ages up, I guarantee you, he'll be putting down a TC. So he's got the, he'll be getting the double TC with the market and hunting dogs and still traps. And he still gets the millet system for faster villager production. Impressive mm -hmm. stuff that he's aged up with the four. Delis and look at this 1000 coin coming in he doesn't need anyone on gold because that is going to be worth 1250 resources so it's 1200 gold to age up so you don't need anyone on gold that pays just for the age up and all you need to do is put all your villagers onto food a couple of rancheros coming in here but they're not going to really achieve much uh, they'll definitely die to um, TC fire there comes the 1k coin, and look, you can already see, look, he's going to be aging up super fast into age four here with four delis and Minutemen as protection if he needed it. So pretty good stuff here. Villagers running to the Hacienda, which can act as an outpost to harbor villagers of the state. The Rancheros are coming. They are like an outlaw goon type unit. They are slowly being produced. Few of them going down. They are five population. A villager going down as well. Yeah, these guys have melee resistance. They don't have uh, sorry, they don't have melee resistance. They only have range resistance. So if if a if a melee unit gets on top of them, they will do a lot of damage. Okay, let's have a look over at Osio. See what he's doing. We now the tax gala textiles coming in. So he's gone for seven hundred wood. He's actually shipped five villagers as well. I'm not sure why he'd ship five villagers before Tax Caller. That doesn't make sense. Because even with two Haciendas, that is going to be worth more than five villagers. So maybe a bit of a mistake there. I'm not sure what the... Maybe from a population perspective, I'm, I'm not really sure. But uh, that still wouldn't make sense, you know. So, um, yeah. So currently on what? Six Haciendas. Wow. Six Haciendas. The max is seven. Maybe he'll stop at six. I think that's fair enough. Tax Caller coming in and look how many villagers that's going to be worth. That's 14 villagers he just got there. A 14 villager shipment in age two. 14. And he's already shipped five villagers. So he's on 41 villagers at nine minutes with Mexico. That's pretty damn good. On top of that, on top of that, the Haciendas are worth a villager each on resources if they gather resources. Uh, they're currently on uh, Rancheros, uh, Quatreros, so they're worth more than a villager each because they're every time a Quatrero gets built, that's 130 coin worth of units. So these Haciendas are insane right now. He does, on top of this, have an extra villager because this is gathering the cantina. Gathers a, a small gold trickle right there, right there 0.6, which is exactly the same as the villager. So yeah, that is worth an extra villager. So 45, 46 villagers he's on. That is pretty mad. 45 villagers. Plus that trickle, plus Asienda's producing 130 coin each every 84 seconds. 
Holy. Damn. This is a strong build. On top of this, we're bolting for even more villages. He's now into 52 villagers. 52 villagers. God diggity damn. I love this ranchero build. Maybe Osteo's been watching some of Lionheart's videos. Am I right? Okay, nine Quatreros. They can be upgraded as well. Oh, using that eye of the assassin attack. We see Karim. He has aged up. He's getting his town watch and gas line. He loves them. He never misses a beat with them. Really likes to get those extra line of sights. Factory already in. Going both for factories. I love it. He did ship 1k wood as well. Not sure what he's used with that wood though. Oh, already going for mass production. So instantly you know he's going to be going straight onto those heavy bombards, those great bombards. I love this as well. He waits for mass production to be finished before he starts putting them on the Great Bombards, which is uh, definitely the most efficient play. Because I, I always say this little top tip for you guys. If, you're, if, you're, if your factory is on a Great Bombard, it's trying to, you know, you, you've got it producing Bombards, but mass production hasn't come in yet. Mass production only, only in, uh, decreases the speed at which they're built after the last great bombard has been made so if you're producing if you're halfway producing a bombard and mass production gets teched whilst it's producing it won't decrease the speed it will only decrease the speed of the next one and everyone after that so it's really worth getting mass production and having your having your factory actually producing resources before mass production is completed and oh my god is this an, is this an egypt revolt it's an Egypt revolt in front of my eyes. Let's go, baby. Oh, it's been a hot minute since I've seen an Egypt revolt. Oh, it's been a hot minute. There goes the seventh Hacienda. So all seven Haciendas, that tax color villager card was worth 16 villagers in total. Wow. Wow. Well, we wow. And now it's go time. We've had 12 and a half minutes of uh, not that much action going on. Both these guys saying, come at me, bro. What are you going to do? What's your best build? Show me your build order. And who's going to come out on top? Who has the best build here? Osteo definitely trying to put down some walls here to deny, delay, stifle his opponent. And look at this. The Corvette Fusilier. Corvetti. I'm sure there'll be some uh, Turks in the chat that can help me uh, how to pronounce that. These are Salam. arguably one of one of the best. They're better than a normal revolutionary. Um, I think they have slightly less HP, but they have uh, different stances. Uh, they have like a long range stance where they get 15 range or something like that, um, which is really beneficial. Um, and then against cavalry, they can stay in their normal stance where they get the uh, the bonus. So they're they're better than normal revolutionaries from that perspective. They're just more versatile versus skirmisher units, basically. Or, thing, or, you know, or they can kite musketeers, all that sort of good stuff. So, All right, Karim, he's just sending over more of these units. Don't forget, he gets every time he ships 14 revolutionaries, he gets a free Mameluke with it. So Mamelukes will be on the way. Monstrosis, what is he doing? He's managed to unrevolt back into age 4. So he revolted and then unrevolted. He's on 47 villagers. He's already lost loads of villagers. We saw a big... Uh, that must have been the church tech for the... The um, the insurgents per house. And uh, oh, he's coming up the rear. Two heavy cannons. And a load of these Quattreras. Gonna find two bombards. That is a shame. That is a huge shame there. Essentially losing those two bombards for free. Karim, he's got another two, though, on the way. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Karim has shipped this card here, the Egyptian fleet. He has shipped the Egyptian fleet, which gives a monitor frigate and a privateer. Cassandra. Oh, Cassandra. So much XP on the floor. 
Can the Egyptian Revolt, his 5k score up now, can the Egyptian Revolt do this? Does he have enough left in the tank? The monitors help him support by attacking the heavy cannon. Two bombards are on the way. They're coming in to support. He needs to be careful about the Contreras, though. He's running out of Fusiliers. Two bombards coming in, but they're going to get attacked once again. And is he going to lose another two bombards for free here? Oh, there goes one. He's going to lose another. That's four bombards in total so far. So imagine, imagine those four bombards not, not dying here. Yeah, nice. We've got a monitor and a frigate doing some damage on land here. It's up 4K score. Shipment after shipment after shipment. Where are those Mamelukes, by the way? He's got two bombards sitting in his base. Maybe he's going to wait for this uh, this batch to uh, protect them. There they go. There's a Mameluk. What does Karim see? He doesn't see everything that's building down here. But look, it's all going on. TC being built. We got a factory going on down here. Another Hacienda. So he's, he's migrating to the south here. Two more bombards almost here, so he could have a nice batch of four bombards. Evet. Looks like Karim's just kind of going up north, seeing if he can see anything up here. Once he identifies there's nothing up north, he's, the score gap's getting getting nicer, actually, for Karim. He's pulling further and further away here. Engine. Got monitor here. Oh, so close to being within range of this evet. Hacienda. Which, by the way, are still producing... Ranchero is still producing these Quattreros. And look, he's back up to seven. To be fair, he hasn't actually lost that many. So he's only lost, uh, looks like, two that he's had to rebuild here. Double factories. 10k HP, because don't forget, this uh, the the one of the factories costs 500 wood and 500 food to send. Uh, and one of the bonuses that it gives you is it gives an extra, it gives them uh, all factories double the HP. Double the HP. It does make all the techs as well in the factory for free. So it's a pretty good shipment. But there is a down payment for it. Producing heavy cannons from them. But they lose. Heavy cannons get obliterated, by the way. Uh, because of heavy cannons are better versus infantry because they have a multiplier versus infantry great bombards they just have like a flat rate damage so they absolutely smack heavy cannons it's not even close you can see here look at this 200 bombard but they do free multiplier uh, versus infantry 500 damage so yeah, so they absolutely smack. They do 250 damage to, to a heavy cannon. Why a heavy cannon does not do 250 damage nowhere near. But this is scary now. Loads of bombards. He's got two Mamelukes here. Lots of revolutionaries and only Rancheros really. Back for round two. The Egyptian revolt. It's been such a hot minute since I've seen the Egyptian revolt. I love it. I love seeing the Egyptian revolt. And oh no, he's going to run into... Oh no. How does this guy keep doing this? That's six bombards in total now. That have gone down to three. Oh no. Six great bombards. Knife down in their prime. By these... Quattreros, which are being produced for free. Mexico down. Oh, but the Mamelukes, it's his turn to snipe some great, some uh, heavy factories, heavy cannons for free. But look at this, the Quattreros are just running riot, running rampant into these great bombards, doing so much damage. I mean, yes, they're going to all get taken down, but they're, I, 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 they're probably destroyed in melee about 10 great bombards right now. Some micro improvement to be had here for Karim, it is fair to say. But Osteo catching them really, really well. See, he's up to he's on 39, so he's lost a lot of villagers, but he keeps producing more. Every time an Hacienda gets built, he gets an extra two villagers, don't forget. It's taking a long time to kill these factories. They have that thousand, that extra double HP. 
More villagers going down. Finally going to be taking down one factory. It's so important you take down both of them. Super, super important. And look what's on the way. Spanish improvisers. That's going to be those guard. Lance is a little bit of a dance. Hee <laughs> hee. Bit of a Michael Jackson. Going on with the great bombards there. Nothing much going on. Just shipment after shipment. There's 14 revolutionary and one Mameluke shipment. So, so strong. So, so strong. And he's just producing great bombards once again. The Mamluks being there might help against these Spanish sympathizers. Oh, heavy cannon coming in. Oh, Corinne, pay attention, Corinne. Oh, God, these Spanish, these guards. Lance is going to destroy the revolutionaries. They're not that strong versus Great Bombards, though. But they'll be strong enough. These Great Bombards taking care of that heavy cannon. Oh, it's good. There's, there's just going to be enough, isn't there? And he cleans up shot. Not like this, Karim. Imagine if he hadn't lost all of those bombards for free. And that might be... I mean, Karim is still up in score, but I think that might be enough for Osteo. I don't know. It's super close. Look, Asienda's going down. So this, uh, this monitor still doing the work here against Mexico. Another TC going down. He's rebuilding once again. 37 villagers. Almost everyone on, on wood. You, the more Haciendas he gets, the, every Hacienda that gets built gives him another two villagers and it gets to recruit for free more Quatreros. So it's super worth. And he's already up to seven again. Already up to seven again. Look at this. Didn't take down that second factory either. That is gonna sting. Another batch of revolutionaries and two bombards are here. Yeah, oh, oh, two more coming in. I, I, with that, he's definitely going to be okay here. As long as he doesn't lose any more great bombards. That's been his biggest weakness here. Oh, no. Unpack. Nice. He might lose one. Oh, yes, he's going to lose one. Okay, he'll take that trade. Look at this. Saldorian, uh, Salvadorian coffee coming in. It's worth 13 villagers currently. That's the uh, the card you get from the first revolt. Does have some things to send. But they're all eco cards, really. So it only has, like, heavy factories and Spanish sympathizers in age four. Wow. And look at that. I, I saw there that there was the uh, the extra range came in from the Arsenal. So these guys, their range attack now has 14. The tech, the second tech from the cantina had come in as well. So they've been, they're essentially guard units. They're guard outlaws now at this point. Guard Quatreros being produced for free. And boom, look at the damage difference there. 150, I think it is, compared to... 250, so they do so much more damage. Heavy cannons do fire faster, though, so that is something. Heavy cannons actually do more damage versus infantry. However, they have one less area of effect. So just in general, great bombards are better. They're, they're a better all-round heavy cannon. Whilst heavy cannons are pretty much only better at killing infantry, and even then they have one less area effect, so it's 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 marginable if they are better at all. Finally, looks like this second fact is gonna go down, so Karim's gonna be happy with that, but Osteo is gaining in score. <laughs> Coven Royales, oh the Culverines as I like to call them, coming in. Guard culverines are either called culverines or they're called Royale cheese, baby. So the Royales with cheese are on the way. And I think, oh, there's four of them as well. Unless Karim has some insane might now. Look at this Osteo up to 51 villagers. So he's making more villagers whilst all of this is going on. The scores are super close right now. He still has all of his boats, but they can't do much from here apart from the long range shot from the monitor. And it looks like it's going to be go time. The Cobra are unpacked. 
And they're locked and loaded, baby. Good micro here. Just backing up and then refiring. Karim has to unpack to get in range of them. But by the time he does that, he's going to lose three of them. And that might be the game right there. My first Egypt revolt I've seen in, in months and months. Almost like it was a forgotten revolt. Karim brings it back from the brink of, brink of extinction. And he goes and loses the game. But so much potential there. Such a fantastic game. It's been a hot minute since we've seen Egypt Revolt. And uh, Osteo with the Asienda boom there was a really great game. Really interesting, unique builds there. But yeah. Great game. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that game. This is what DE is all about. Who would see Egypt versus Central America unrevolting back into Mexico with Asienda booms. Look at that villager boom. Woohoo! Damn. Great stuff there. Great, great stuff there. His, he made just from shipping an A. Guys, so work this out, right? An age one shipment, right? The Rancheros card. That was worth 72 Quattreros this game. Yes, he had to make lots of Haciendas, but still, that's an age one card. That was 72. I'll tell you what, guys. Why? We're going to work this out. We're gonna, I'm going to get my phone out. I'm going to get the camera because you guys know what my math is like. <laughs> right. Calculator. So 72. It's like being at school again. Times. I think 130 gold, isn't it? Nine. Look at that. Can you guys see that? That was an age one card that was worth 9,360 gold. That ain't showing up on the all resources, mate. That ain't showing up there. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. And I will catch you in the next game for another math lesson, maybe. Oh.